For many years, I lived in St. Catharines, Ontario. I had a rather large library. I was donated books. Various preachers had shared some of their old books with me, and some of them needed to be rebound. And I had found a man in town. His name was John Van Heusen, a Dutchman who had moved to Canada and started his bookbinding business there in 1974. He was the best in the business, did a great job. As I thought about this story I want to tell, I, I thought of the words of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, which say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. My wife uh, came to me one day and said, uh, Christmas is coming and I'd like to give you something nice. Um, what would you like? And I said, to tell you the truth, I would love some books rebound. So she went down to my study. I said, there's a stack of books in the corner that need rebinding. And she went and she selected two or three of these books and took them down to John Van Heusen. Well, um, he had them to work over the holiday season and my birthday is just a few days later, January 3, in case anyone's noting. And so uh, she came to me again and said, what would you like for your birthday? And I said, well, you could get more of those books bound. She said, well, that's not any fun. I'll give you the money, you go, you go take them yourself. <laughs> and so I went down to John Van Heusen's shop. And uh, he said, come on into the office, I have a story to tell you. He said, two days before Christmas, my brother called, my oldest brother. I think there were six children. They had all moved from Holland and settled in Canada. But the old father was still living back in Holland, and the oldest brother said, Dad is very low, and uh, the home where he's living has called us and, and told us that uh, he's not long for this earth. And, and so I, I know we can't all go over to see him, but I'm going to fly over, and I wonder if there's anything you wanted to tell Dad before he went to heaven. And so he called each of the children and they rose up and called their father blessed. And, and so he wrote down these comments and flew over to Holland the next day. Took him two days to get to the little village where their father was. And went to his father's room. The father was lying there in the bed, very weak. Father, do you remember me? Do you know who I am? And he said, yes, he recognized him. They had a little conversation. He read these comments that his children had given regarding their father and his testimony. And then he said, I'd like to pray with you, Dad. And he took his father's hand and he prayed. And When he opened his eyes, the old man was already in heaven. Well, back in St. Catharines, John Van Heusen was feeling very melancholy. He was a long way from his father and he knew his father was passing away. And even though he knew better intellectually, he had this sense that his father was going into the dark. It was just kind of a foreboding feeling. And in order to distract himself from this, this sort of morose sense that had fallen on his soul, he decided to go into the shop and do some bookbinding. Well, if you ever went into John Van Heusen's shop, there were scores of books to be rebound. He did books for the library and the university and all sorts of private people. And so on this particular day, he went in, however, and he went over to my little pile that my wife Louise had brought him, and he selected one of those books and he pulled it apart, started to take it apart in order to rebind it. And as he did, a little slip of paper fell to the ground at his feet. So this, this thing that was bothering him, this sense that his father was going into the dark, it was just very hard on him to think about this, but as he picked up this piece of paper, here he discovered that it was a daily devotional calendar slip written in Dutch. And the two verses that were on the, the slip were, at evening time it shall be light, and the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. And the writer had explained that when a Christian dies, they're not going from the light into the dark. It's like crossing the international dateline. 
They're going from one day into another day. They're going from a day of sorrow and suffering into a day of perfect joy in the presence of the Lord. And it was just such a comfort to his heart. It was exactly what he was concerned about. He looked at the calendar slip and he thought to himself, God prepared that for me. Now, let me explain how convoluted it was for that little piece of paper to get into his hand that day. This calendar slip was part of a daily devotional calendar that had been shipped from Holland to Mr. William Pell Sr. in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And out of the 365 sheets on the calendar, for some reason, this one had caught his attention. He'd torn it off the calendar and he'd slipped it into that particular book. Now he had a large library, but it was in that particular book. And he had four sons who were preachers. And um, that particular book, when his library was broken up among his four sons, that book went into the library of his son, Peter. Now, his son, Claude, didn't give me any of his books. His son, Gerald, didn't give me any of his books. Eventually, long after this, I did get some of his brother uh, Will's books. But Peter had received this particular book, and Peter had generously given me about 500 books from his library to go into mine. And of all the books that Peter gave me, this was one of the few that needed to be rebound and had got into this little pile. And when my wife had come down, out of the stack of a dozen books that needed to be rebound, she had selected two or three, including that one. And out of all the book binders, she went to John Van Heusen. And out of all the books in his shop on that particular day, He'd gone to my little pile, and he'd picked out that book. And as he pulled it apart, here he discovered a calendar leaflet with the very verses he needed to comfort his heart in a specific way. And the calendar leaflet was written in Dutch, in his heart language. And if that's not amazing enough, the date on the calendar slip was that very day 50 years before. So the God of heaven, knowing the need of that man, had moved the heart of the author to write that slip and moved the editor to put it on that particular day and Mr. Pell to tear it off and put it in his book and that book to end up in Peter's hands and then into mine and then my wife selecting that particular book taking it to John, not knowing that behind it all was the God of all comfort. How far will God go to comfort one of his people? What a beautiful story. The God of all comfort who comforts us in all our trouble. Not that we may be comfortable, although he wants to comfort us, but that we may be able to comfort others who are in any sort of trouble. God help us to trust this God, to know how much he cares for us, and that he notices a bookbinder who's discouraged as his father is passing into eternity. And God says, I know how to comfort his heart. What a wonderful story of the God of all comfort. May God encourage us to look for others who are going through sorrow and say, Lord, give me the comfort that I might be able to share it with them.